What is going on? Brian Carroll here, PowerRackStrength.com, coming to you from beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. Today, I'm going to do another article, the series articles that I wrote a long time ago. This is from eight years ago. Five reasons why your bench press sucks. Now, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, and share this video. I appreciate it very much. So let's get right into the article slash video. So five reasons why your bench press sucks. Number one reason is your main lifting cues are not there. So these are things that you got to consider when you're really trying to solidify your bench press. Are you locked in? Are you rigid? Are your feet gripping the floor? Are you squeezing your shoulder blades together? Are you nice and stable on the bench press? Are you bending the bar? These are the types of things that I talk about in 1020 Life and Gift of Injury that you need to have in your bench press form, things that you need to look at if you really want to take your bench press to the next level, or just keep it from sucking, or to get it from suck to stink, or however Dave Tate puts that, just to get it to not suck so much. So that's it, the main lifting cues, you need to have them. Maybe you don't use mine, but you need to have some type of cues for your baseline. The next thing is, is you're wearing the wrong shoes. Now, this would apply more for the squat and the deadlift, but I see some people make it way more complicated than they should. Wear a shoe that you're comfortable in, where it's a running shoe, or uh, I've seen people wear track spikes or track shoes, or something I've worn before is New Balance Minimuses, a shoe that's for off-road, trail hiking and such, rock hiking, climbing, those types of things. They have little hairs on the bottom of the shoe that are grippy. Those can be beneficial for you if your feet slide a little bit. So even people like to wear wedge shoes, but I don't think that it's important for you to have a $300 pair of shoes to bench press. Now for the squat, the deadlift, that's your call. I think a good old pair of Chuck Taylors or Vans will work just fine for you. So hello, I wanna to talk to you real quick about my CBD line. Now, I don't want to do a Patreon account. I don't want to hide certain videos on this account that I think are very valuable. So I'm asking you, if you like CBD, to support my channel, to try out my products. I have great 100% CBD isolate products. I have the isolate drops in both natural flavor and cinnamon, 100% CBD, no THC in it whatsoever. The testing's on the website. I also have a product called CryoFreeze, 1,000 milligrams of CBD isolate, no THC, mixed with a special menthol formula, similar to a biofreeze, but with a gram of CBD in this. Then of course I have four different bombs. I have a lemongrass bomb, a sage bomb, a lavender bomb, and I have a natural bomb. And these you use multiple times a day. They will help reduce your pain and take it away a little bit or take the edge off. So if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, please support me. The link's below for these products. Thank you so much. So the next reason why your bench press sucks is you're not attacking your weak points. You're only doing the things that you're good at. You're never doing the things that you suck at. You've got to do the things that you suck at. So for instance, if you're really quick and explosive on the bench press and you're always showing off your speed work, but you're never grinding, you're never attacking that mid range or that lockout with board presses, and pin presses and really hammering your triceps and getting under heavy loads and making yourself push through to lockout, then you're probably not gonna be able to take your bench press to the next level. Now I know my bench press has never been my forte. I've had times where it's been really moving. There's reasons for that. I've just never been a great bench presser. I have bench pressed over 800 pounds in multiple weight classes. I've repped 500 pounds multiple times in the gym with a close grip. I think my best ever is 500 for four or five reps. I think a video I have shows an easy three with a close grip. So nonetheless, I was never a great bench presser, but I got the most that I could out of my body type. I've got kind of long arms, so that doesn't help either. Nonetheless, I did everything that I could to try to bench as big as I could, and that was done by attacking my weak points and getting out of my comfort zone. So. The next thing that I probably sucked the worst at was my mentality. I could never have the same mentality for the bench press as I did for the squat. So my mentality suffered. So you wanna be aggressive, 
but confident and you need to have some fear of the weight when you're bench pressing really heavy. So again, you need to have confidence getting under the bar that you can press it up. Me, unfortunately, under the bar, a lot of the time I was just hoping that I wasn't gonna skull crush my face or that my arms weren't gonna snap once I was handling in the mid eights, 900 pounds. So that's me, that's my sob story with the bench press. But remember, mentality, you need to have a good mental checklist where you're not too far up, revved up, where you missed your cues, you know, you bought your form and such. So remember, you need to have a mental checklist where you make it automatic every single time and you treat every single weight the same. That's a good mentality for you. So the next thing is, is you're loose, you're all over the place while your bench press sucks. You're not tight and not locked in. So if you watch the best bench pressers out there, you'll see how rigid and tight and how little of energy leakages they have when they're bench pressing. Their feet are locked in, their, 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 their hamstrings and everything are tight, their back's solidified on the bench. The way I call it is like the tripod. You have one foot, two feet, the upper back locked in, the back in a nice, nice arch, the legs in a position and hips in a position where you can use a lot of leg drive to drive the bar back over your face to lock out. But again, you gotta be tight. Looseness is the weak, is the, um, the opposite of power. Uh, looseness robs power. Looseness is the enemy of power. You need to be tight, rigid, and locked in. And this takes practice, okay? So bench and big takes, takes practice. It comes easier to some people than it does for others. But I wanna help you help your bench press suck a little less. So once again, your form sucks, you don't have good lifting cues, you gotta have good form to lock it in, a good approach, a good baseline to start. You need to have good shoes that you're comfortable in that are gonna help you grip the floor and to keep you as solidified on the bench as possible. You gotta attack your weak points, whatever you're good at, do the opposite of that for your assistance work and attack your weak points, attack your triceps, Shorten your range of motion, get your form locked in, because if your form sucks, that might be a weak point as well. Make sure that you're attacking those weak points and making them strong points, then move on to the next thing that's kind of weak. And then the next thing, of course, is your mentality. You gotta have a sharp mindfulness whenever you're bench pressing big, because that weight is right over your face. Bad things can happen, we've all seen it. You don't wanna do a skull crusher with the barbell loaded with 225, 315, 405, and so on and so forth. The last thing is making sure you stay tight. So these five things will help you take your bench press maybe from suck to stink, or help get it out of the gutter for you. But once again, these things take time, work on your mentality, work on staying tight, find the right shoes that are good for you to help you bench the most weight, find form cues, dial in your form, some people like to bench press with their feet out wide, so it's a little bit more taxing on their hips, but they get a little bit more leg drive. Other people like to tuck their feet back, as I show in my video uh, on YouTube, the two different forms, and I'm gonna post that video uh, right here so you can click on it, so you can see the two different ways that I teach the bench press. One with your feet back is gonna give you a little bit more arch, less leg drive, but less range of motion. The one with your feet out is gonna give you more leg drive, less arch, more range of motion, but I think it can carry over with more leg drive. So it's gonna depend on your personal preferences, your injury history and such. And again, your form has to be good. Main lifting cues, your form, mentality, attacking your weak points. These are all things that you have to do to take your bench press to the next level. Check out the full article, it's linked below. Thank you so much, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching today. Please subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed this video and have a wonderful day.